Welcome to Your First Trade. This week, we're talking about the importance of trend, and today we'll explore tools used to identify and quantify price trend. And we'll build an example trade around the idea of trend strength. Now, to help us with that, let's welcome in our good friend, Ray Kimbrell. Ray, we've talked about being able to identify a trend visually. We looked at how to do that last episode. Now, let's explore some tools that can maybe help make it a little bit easier to identify and use trends. So maybe the first question, Ray, uh, is what are some of the advantages of using trend tools? Uh, sure thing, Ben. And uh, again, once again, thanks for having me on with you. I really appreciate that. And uh, so uh, some of the advantages are uh, that trend tools, you know, like, uh, like the moving averages, uh, they can be automatically applied to a chart and uh, they can be customized. And uh, they also may require less subjective analysis, you know, which, uh, you know, when looking at the, uh, the stock prices. Yeah, and, and that's interesting because, you know, as you and I both know, and as uh, many traders know, when you look at a stock chart, your yep. perception, what you see, might be a little bit different from my perception and what I see in terms of the trend or those highs and lows that we talked about last time. So yep. uh, does that mean then that, uh, say, for instance, a moving average that you mentioned, that could take some of that guesswork out of determining trend direction, right? Uh, yeah, it, it sure does. You know, um, so Ben, in the moving average, okay, you know, that's just a, a mathematical calculation uh, that that uh, that averages closing prices, uh, and then that's divided by a particular time frame uh, to get an average price for that period. Uh, so, you know, it's easier to see the past history of the trend, you know, as well as that that current direction. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you what, as you and I both know, and we've taught this idea, there are lots of different moving averages out there yes. uh, and that could help us to make decisions. Doesn't mean that any one is uh, one particular moving average type is better than another. And as a matter of fact, we'll examine uh, some of those as we uh, demonstrate this today, as we start to look at uh, these uh, trend tools. But, but yeah. let's ask the question this way. Would it be easy enough for then a trader uh, to simply look at the direction of a moving average and be able to make a determination as to the trend direction, Ray? Yeah, uh, sure, Ben. It, you know, here's the deal. As long as they're looking at the moving average time frame, you know, that matches how they trade. So, you know, as we taught, we taught this kind of last, last episode here when you and I were together was um, – you know, the common moving averages time periods. So, for example, you know, some common moving averages are the 10 period for a, a short term uh, trends, uh, you know, potentially a 30 or 50 period for an intermediate uh, term trend. And, you know, going on as long as 100 or 200 periods uh, for that long term trend. Yeah, I, I just want to circle back with this one because I think this is an interesting idea. Because you remember last time we talked about this, when we were talking about trend and time frame, and it's important to understand both of those in conjunction with one another, we were talking about a long-term trend maybe being uh, months to years, and, right. and that would equate roughly to that 100 or 200 period uh, moving average. We talked about an intermediate time frame being weeks to months, and, and that would certainly go along with the idea of what you mentioned with the 30 or the 50 period moving average. And then we talked about a short-term time frame being days to weeks. And, and, and this is where uh, a, a lot of traders may start to focus their efforts is on some of those short-term trends. Yeah. And, and a 10 day or 10 period moving average or a 20 period moving average or a nine period moving average doesn't matter. It's all falls within that kind of short term time frame, doesn't it, Ray? It, it sure does. And, uh, and that's the thing that a lot of people get hung up on, I think, is try to figure out, you know, what's the best one, right? What am I going to do? And as long as, again, as, as we said, as long as it's matching the way they're trading, uh, then they found the right moving average. So that's the how you should look at it. Um, you know, what someone else may be lo looking at or using is, is theirs. You need to determine on yep. as a trader what your goal is and what you're looking for. 
Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. You know, a trader could use a moving average as a means to make a decision about not only trend direction, but also about maybe the idea of entering or exiting yeah. a trade. So, so if your trader were to incorporate uh, a trend tool, like a moving average, as part of that decision-making process, Ray, are there right. any challenges or pitfalls that they might run into in using moving averages to make those decisions? Yeah, Ben, I would, I'd say there are. Um, so the moving average, you know, it's, it's a lagging indicator, right? You're looking at past periods, right? And so that moving average mm -hmm. can lag behind, you know, a rapid price movement. So, um, you know, when the, when the trend is sideways, for example, and the, the price can often whipsaw, you know, up and, and down around that moving average, you know, um, but for you know, uh, but for easy trend identification um, and, and simple uh, entry and exit signals, you know that moving average is that it can be a very helpful tool in, in making that informed uh, trading decision. Ben, I, I like that because it can take, as you mentioned before, it can take some of that subjectivity yeah. out of the mix as long as. A, a trader is using the tools in an appropriate way. And hopefully that's one of the things that we're going to talk about and, and address in this episode, as well as others, is using these technical analysis tools and concepts to be able to make those informed decisions. Now, Ray, yeah. I, I alluded to this uh, earlier, but what about the idea that there's any one best moving average type or... <laughs> Uh, moving average length of time, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Ben, uh, you know, if I got like a nickel for every time we got that question asked, I wouldn't <laughs> have to be doing any of these things, right? So I do have one thing, right. Ben, that – there you go. There it is. There's the one best thing right there, all right? The, 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 the crystal ball. No. So, um, you know, uh, it's important to remember that there really isn't one best – technical indicator okay and uh, uh what works is the the moving average that matches the time frame of the trades that you're looking at you know um you know and if that one resonates with you kind of like we just talked about then that's the one you should use all right you know it simply means uh you know, it, that you can easily identify and consistently act on the signals that are given yeah absolutely so yeah. we're going to talk a little bit more uh, today, and we're going to demonstrate how to uh, uh, use some of these tools. And as a matter of fact, we're going to come back and uh, and place uh, an example trade based on moving averages. But Ray, would uh, just one last question before we kind of wrap this part up? Sure. Um, you know, as we talk about this, and you, as you and I teach this, uh, this can be really one of the more helpful tools that traders use in terms of solidifying their understanding of technical and or of, of technical analysis and really price trend so so this is probably one of those basic foundation ideas uh, of technical analysis right yeah I, I would say uh, Ben it, you know kind of goes along with what we did taught last time is the trend really starts at all uh, you, you need to understand yeah. what that trend is and and again the trend doesn't always go in the direction that it has been going. So understanding it, using the tools correctly, and using using other aspects of what you learn about technical analysis is a key thing. You know, it's not just about the trend. And so um, understand that as a trader going into it, know what the trend is, understand what that means and how to use that to make a, an informed decision. And it really can help you because the trend does uh, set everything off, in my opinion, as to where you're going with your strategies uh, with your entries, your exits. Uh, it's a very important yep. part of the of the process. Absolutely. Hey, Ray, thanks yep. very much because, uh, you know, this has been a great discussion uh, of some of the trend tools and probably more importantly than what those tools are, why they are used and how they can help us. Now, we're going to have to leave this conversation right here. We could talk about this all day, but Ray will be back again in a few minutes to help us demonstrate a trade example using trend tools that we mentioned. But coming up, I'll take a look at the trend tools on the Thinkorswim platform. So stick around. Welcome back to Your First Trade. And we've been talking about trend tools today, but let's take a look 
and how some of those trend tools on the Thinkorswim plot platform can help us to visualize trend strength, trend direction, and help us to make, as Ray mentioned, more informed trading decisions. So follow me down to the charts tab and we'll begin our journey into trend tools right there. And as we take a look at that charts tab, we're gonna see uh, at the moment an uptrending stock. Now remember, anytime we look at individual symbols on the Thinkorswim platform, they are for illustrative and educational purposes only, or they are not recommendations. And so we're looking here at GE. Now this is a stock that we've looked at before. As a matter of fact, we talked about it in the context of understanding trend by seeing that pattern of higher highs and higher lows and moving from the lower left to the upper right. So now we've already visually identified the strength and direction of this trend. But now let's start to use those trend tools, those moving averages that Ray started to talk about, and we'll see if we can visualize this trend uh, a little bit better in terms of long-term, intermediate-term, and short-term timeframes. Now, where we're gonna go on the charts tab is right up at the top of the page to that little icon that looks like a flask or a beaker. We're gonna click on that flask icon and that's gonna bring up our edit studies and strategies dialog box. We're gonna go over to the left-hand side and we're gonna type in the word S-I-M-P. Now, as I mentioned, there are many different moving averages out there. We're gonna start with a simple moving average, not because it's the best, not because it's simple, simply because it is perhaps the easiest to understand. It is simply taking typically closing prices, adding them up over a period of time, and then dividing by the number of increments in that period. So a 10 day moving average, a simple moving average, would be the closing price for each of the last 10 days divided by 10 to get that moving average. And then each day, the oldest data would drop off and the newest data would come on and you'd plot the new number. So we're gonna click on simple moving average and we're gonna add that to the chart. Now by default, the chart comes up to a nine period moving average. Since this is a daily chart, that's gonna be a nine day moving average. Now we're gonna adapt this a little bit and customize it. Now remember here on the Thinkorswim platform, anytime you see that gear icon, it indicates something that can be changed or customized. So we're gonna click on the gear icon and we see the uh, simple moving average customizing dialog box come up. So we're gonna change this time frame on this moving average and we'll make this our short term moving average. Now the difference between a nine day and a 10 day or a nine period and a 10 period moving average is gonna be fairly negligible. So don't get caught up in worrying about the exact number of days. Think about it though. 10 days represents two trading weeks of five days each. So this is days to weeks, our short term time frame. Now we're gonna come down here, we're gonna change a couple of things. We're gonna change the width of this line so that we can see it on the chart. So I'm gonna make that three points wide as opposed to one point wide. And we're gonna make this one that kind of purplish red color so that we know that that's a little more urgent. That's the near term time frame moving average. And we're gonna click on okay and apply an okay. So now we have the 10 day moving average or we could generally refer to it as the 10 period moving average. Because if we were to change this chart aggregation period from days to weeks and click on okay. Now that is a 10 week moving average, but we're gonna take this back to a one year, one day chart. Now it's back to a 10 day moving average. And you can see that that generally follows the path of the price of the stock over the course of averaging out the last 10 days of trading. And right now the price of the stock is just below that 10 day moving average. Now that can give us a trend direction. Now let's go back to our flask icon and let's do the same thing. And let's type in the words S-I-M-P, simple moving average once again, and we'll add another one to the mix. We'll click on the gear icon. We'll make this one now 50 days. So 50 days, just about a trading quarter. We'll change that to three 
uh, points wide. And we'll make that 50 uh, day moving average in this case. We'll make that kind of this, uh, let's make it that light blue color, kind of bluish color. Click on OK and apply an OK. And so now we can see there's our 50 day moving average and it generally stays and follows the trend direction. It's gonna be a little bit slower, but we could also say that this stock is in an intermediate term uptrend as well as a short term uptrend just by looking at the direction of those two moving averages. Now we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna click on that flask icon again, and type in the words S-I-M-P, simple, and add simple moving average, and we'll add one more into the mix. We'll customize it. We'll make this one 200 periods, which is just about a trading year. So think about that. That now becomes long-term months to years, and we'll make this one kind of that darker green color. Click on OK. It doesn't matter what color. You can set the colors to whatever you would like them to be. We'll click on Apply and OK, and we can see that that length of time moving average is moving up as well. The price is well above that 200 period moving average. Now, where those decision making points might occur is when the price moves either above or below the moving average, if it's a shorter term moving average, when the shorter term moving average moves from above to below or from below to above a moving average, or when two moving averages cross over one another as they did back here, where the 50 period moving average crossed above the 200 period moving average. And the idea here is that there's not a lot of need for discretion. This takes that subjectivity out of the decision-making process. We can say objectively, the price is in a short-term, intermediate-term, and long-term uptrend based on those moving averages. And if we wanted to move this down to a shorter time frame, let's make this one day, one minute. Now, this is 10 uh, minutes, this is 50 minutes, and 200 minute moving averages, and we can see the differences here, but those moving averages still apply in those shorter term time frames. Now, let's look really quickly at a downtrending stock. This happens to be Disney, again, not a recommendation, simply an illustrative example. And you notice that that moving average can give us a hint about what is possibly happening. The long-term moving average, that 200 period moving average, continuing to move down. The 50 period moving average, the intermediate length moving average, kind of going flat. And that short term moving average, the 10 day moving average, starting to turn higher. That may be an indication of a possible reversal of the price from a downward trend into an uptrend. So those moving averages can be a helpful tool. And I'll show you what we can do really quickly. We can come up to studies and click on save study set and we'll make this a 10 50 200 ma study set we'll click on save so that we can reload this on the charts as we want to but coming up next we'll bring ray kimbrell back in to build a stock trade around trend strength using some of these trend analysis tools like simple moving averages. So stick around. Welcome back to Your First Trade. Hey, we've talked about trend tools like moving averages and the idea of finding stocks that are moving in the direction of their trend. But before we get to our trade demonstration today, let's welcome back in our good friend, Ray Kim Brell. And Ray, before we place a trade using a moving average, what are some of the considerations to keep in mind? Uh, sure, Ben, there's a couple of things to consider. Uh, first one here is uh, moving averages are, uh, are not without their limitations. Uh, you kind of discussed that earlier. And, uh, you know, one of the challenges is that um, you know, they may generate a false signals uh, during choppy or sideways markets. So uh, additionally, uh, you know, relying solely on moving averages, that can lead, uh, you know, to a delayed responses uh, to rapid uh, market changes. And another one, 
is, uh, you know, always have a clear trading plan in place um, and, and never really rely solely on the moving averages for uh, decision making. You know, just because the trend is moving in a particular direction, you know, it's not a guarantee that it's going to always continue to do so. So it's a uh, it's always a good idea to incorporate that risk management techniques that I know we've talked about and we'll continue to talk about, you know, to protect your uh, protect your capital. Um, but that you know, hey, but that's another place where gonna, where the moving averages can come in handy. And I know, uh, you know, we'll be discussing that in later episodes. Yeah, absolutely. And those are good reminders, Ray. So now follow me back down to the the charts tab, and we'll place a demonstration trade. Now remember, any of the th the symbols that we look at simply for illustrative and educational purposes only. And we're going to take a look at Walmart in this particular case, symbol WMT. And I've left those three moving averages on there that we looked at before. But this is a good indication and a good example of how quick those moving averages can make trend identification. I can look at the long-term moving average and say, objectively, this isn't a long-term uptrend. Walmart is moving above its 200 period moving average. Second, I can say that it's in an intermediate term uptrend. That 50 period moving average is moving higher. The price is above that level. And I can also say that the short term trend is up. And most recently, and this gets to the point of our trade, the price of the stock has moved from below to above that 10 period moving average. So trading in the direction of all three trends, trading based on the entry signal here of price moving from below to above. And again, remember, this is not a recommendation. This is simply a demonstration trade. We can place this trade right from the chart by right-clicking, clicking on buy, reading through our order, and editing our order if necessary, and then clicking on send to fire that order off. And so as we do that, we make sure that we know what we're trading, we make sure that we have a decision-making paradigm. In this particular case, price moving from below to above that moving average. Now, Ray, as we've done this, this is great stuff. Yeah. Uh, and these are good reminders and a good example of how we can do that. But before we go, uh, any final thoughts on using moving averages to make trading decisions? Sure, Ben. Um, you know, and it's one of the ideas you just touched on just just now, and that is using the multiple moving averages. You know, um, you know, not only to get a sense of the trend over different time frames, you know, but also help make that informed entry or exit decision, as the case may be. Uh, but you know, one more thing, I know, as I mentioned it before here, you know, trends, uh, the trend tools are, are just that. You know, tools to be used in conjunction with a trading plan. Have that plan. <laughs> well, Ray, it's always a great plan to have you here on Your First Trade. Thanks again for being with us today. We appreciate it, and we look forward to having you on the show uh, quite often again. Now, you can follow me on Twitter at Ben Watson CS, as in Charles Schwab. And for more educational resources, check out schwab.com forward slash coaching. Now, thanks for tuning in to Your First Trade. Make sure you tune in every day at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, and I'll see you next time.